and he agreed. So I got 15% off. Can't necessarily remember if I knew it was rest of the world spec. It was quite heavily modified. Heavily modified, I mean, not like cut up, but also part of he's like, what have I done? It's my second vehicle and I've only got parking for one car. That looks remarkably like this Defender. Is unlocked. Let's take a look inside. So this is what a rest of the world spec defender looks like. God, it's almost brand new. It's brand new. It's the gearbox handle. Oh, that's tight. That's tight. Oh, wow. Headline. Good. Oh look. Roll cage. So that is the bit of the internal hoop of a safety device's roll cage. This can't have many miles on it. That's actually that. No, no, battery's dead. This can't have many miles on it. It's in such good condition. Anyway, that was a little homage to one of my more popular videos about the new 300 TDI I found in Afghanistan. This one is actually mine. And in this video, I'm going to tell you the story about how I, how I came to own it. So stay tuned and I'll give you the full lowdown. So welcome inside my rest of the world spec defender. I've alluded to it and I've done various videos about this vehicle, but I've um, never really, I've never explained the full story, which is what I'm going to do now. There've been a various amount of questions I've had over time. And I put a video out asking people wanted anything specifically they were interested about anything about the vehicle they wanted me to to talk about and uh, yeah I had a few questions so I thought I'd part of that I'll probably answer some of those questions just by telling the whole story so it was 2015 and we knew the Defender was ending production uh, we got told about December 2013 uh, beginning in 2015, I was wanting to, I had some savings and I was aware that the pr end of production would probably have an impact on defenders, prices, everything like that, desirability. And I wanted to do something with my savings because interest rates were, have basically been appalling in the UK, written, you know, hovering around one and a half, one and a half percent and below. And <clears throat> you kind of think, well... I'm not really going to earn much from my savings, shall I try and do something with it in the in the in the short term? So uh, I went looking for really good defenders, and I didn't really know what I might find. But I've been looking at a few, been trying to I'm I'm an I and work out you know some of the some of the financials, and then I found this one on Piston Heads. It was advertised. Um, it was advertised by um, a, a trade, a, a, like a company that sold, well, sold cars, but they didn't sell really Land Rovers. They weren't known for Land Rovers. And they had it on, on there on the website and it did, never appeared on eBay or anywhere like that. So I went uh, to visit the Defender. Oh, it's got a bit bright now, changing. Sun comes in and out in this British summer. So, I went to see the vehicle I organised and I went to see the vehicle after work. After work? No, I think I took a day off work. I took a day off work and I travelled. It was in East Anglia. Uh, so it was quite a bit of a journey for me to get there. I travelled all the way up and I was kind of, I kind of thought I was going to buy it before I visited. Which is probably never the best way of approaching a car purchase. Um, so I got there. And they'd had it out, and they so they told me they said um, they'd had it about three years, and they'd bought it for towing trailers on the continent, being left-hand drive. And but they'd never, they'd not, it not actually happened that way. They'd not really been using it, so they they wanted to sell it on. So I just went to town. I had like you know my old clothes on. This was March 2015, and I just looked over that. I spent about two hours looking over the vehicle and when I I wasn't I can't necessarily remember if I knew it was rest of the world spec before I went 
but I checked the VIN number out and the engine VIN number is F, which is the rest of the world spec, meaning 300 TDI with no EGR or catalytic converter. And that's kind of confirmed it and I just knew I wanted it. it um, so I spent about two hours. I poured over the entire vehicle, took photos of everything. I've still got those photos. And um, it's good kind of reference stuff. But I was taking the photos if I was going to go away and try and make a decision. But I kind of realised that I, I, I wanted it. Um, it was quite heavily modified. Heavily modified, I mean, not like cut up. I mean, it's got an ex full external roll cage on it, which I wouldn't, you know, so be it. But it was quite, had a lot of modifications on it and quite high spec modifications. Um, which is only a, a good thing, really. Um, like a winch, so it had a winch. It had 25585 mud terrain tyres. It had uh, Ashcroft, Ashcroft locking diffs, front and rear, uh, with um, full ARB, um, no, sorry, not Ashcroft, ARB locking diffs, front and rear, with an ARB compressor, and Ashcroft heavy, uh, heavy duty, um, upgraded half shafts and it had dual battery system it's got aircon in the rear which is incredibly rare it's not a factory fit but um, that's not very common so and it's got the 2.8 TGV which is um, some people love it it's a, like a 300 TDI on steroids so there was a lot going for it there was a lot going for it um, I managed so yeah, so I'd spent about two hours crawling around under the vehicle. And then I went back into their, into their office and he's like, oh, I thought you'd gone. And I was like, oh, no, I was just checking the vehicle out. So he came outside with me and I kind of talked through my thought process. I said I wanted it. I said it, I didn't think it was worth what it was worth. And that, and I talked through some other values of vehicles. I talked about the modifications and how they were, you know, they added value, but they were not that much value because I wouldn't necessarily, I didn't, I said I didn't necessarily want the winch or, you know, things like that. I didn't necessarily want some of these mods, but I liked the vehicle as a whole. So they actually gave it less of value for me. So I basically, I, I offered him 15% less. And I said, if you take, um, if you, if you agree to that now, I'll put a deposit on it right now. And he agreed. So I got 15% off from my haggling. That's how I kind of went about it. Um, so yeah, put the deposit down and and went away. So there were a couple of things that I picked up. And so part of, part of the, the thing I said, um, uh, is there a winch remote for the, for the winch? And he said, no. So I said, I want, I want a winch remote. And I also said that, um, you know, it would need to come with an MOT because it's trade. So, uh, there was a steering box leak from the steering box, um, naturally. And uh, I said, I'll, that, that'll be an MOT fail, so I'll need that fixed. So that was part of the condition. They fitted a new a new steering box as well, AdWest steering box. So that got thrown in. So anyway, I went away and they were then going to go and prepare, prepare the vehicle for, um, for, for, for its MOT and I was going to collect it. That took about two and a half weeks. And I was, it, it's quite tricky that I was going to take another day of work and I needed to get the train up there and then get a taxi to where they are. They were quite rural and, and uh, that was a bit fiddly. So I was on the phone. I was like, you know, when can I book my train ticket to go up? There? And they, uh, they were being a bit sheepish about it. Essentially, they'd bought a steering box, but it was a right and drive steering box. You know, uh, there we go. Um, so it just there was a bit of delay to get it, but eventually, eventually, I went up on the train. I bought a I bought a return train ticket just because I wasn't sure that I could turn up. Even though they knew I was coming, I could turn up and they'd be like, "Oh, it's not ready." But it was ready. I turned up and they, you know, uh, they'd got it ready. It was parked there and they'd charged the battery up. And because um, later I found out the battery was totally dead. But there we go. And uh, and uh, it was there waiting for me. It had like little one of those paper things in the footwell. 
one of those little touches that dealers tend to do, I think. I'd asked him about it when I was looking around it. I'd asked, you know, so what's the service history? And he said, there isn't any. I'm like, okay, great. That's never a, something you want to hear when you go to look at a vehicle. Um, but it didn't put me off and it doesn't tend to put me off defenders. I mean, my other defender, my main defender, has got partial service history. It's got quite a few receipts for stuff. Um, but the first three years of its life, I've got nothing. But, you know, it, it turned out all right and I've serviced it a lot and it's worked out. This one, being such low miles on 40,000 miles, having no service history means that if it, I mean, it would have had a service history from new um, because it, I, I knew the vehicle was, it was quite, with the mods that were put on it, they weren't cheap modifications. They were like genuine ARB stuff imported from Australia. So I knew that money had been spent on it and they probably wouldn't have scrimped on the servicing. I just didn't have the paper to back it up. But the fact that it was low miles meant that, and I could see the condition, the condition was excellent. And I, I knew that at such low miles, you know, it, it wouldn't have been an incredible harmful amount of damage done to the vehicle if it hadn't have been, if it had been poorly serviced or not necessarily to the book. Um, so I kind of went in knowing that. Anyway, got the train up there, collected it. I drove like five miles. I just had to stop when I phoned Jen and it's just that, it's the, the most incredible feeling when you pick up a, a vehicle and you drive it home and you're like, oh, part of you's like, I own this vehicle now. But also part of you's like, what have I done? It's my second vehicle and I've only got parking for one car at my house. So, yeah, it uh, it was a lovely dry day. I drove it back. I uh, had to learn how to use the GK in overdrive. <laughs> and I took it home. And I uh, don't know what my neighbours must have thought. I mean, it had been two cars, like, wedged in all the... Uh, in the driveway and uh, on the road outside, two defenders. Then over the next six months, I basically... So my plan, what was my plan for the vehicle? I didn't really know, I just knew I wanted it. And I knew that I wanted it to be more like it was when it came out of the factory because they have better value. So I, I and I didn't really need or want a lot of the modifications. So I set about taking off the mods and selling them. And I regained about 20% of what I bought it for by selling the mods. So from the list price, I basically had 35% off um from buying it by doing that and that was part of the appeal i mean the best value defenders you can buy are ones that have a whole lot of mods on and if you're prepared to put in the time to take them off and you don't want those mods then you get an incredible discount on the defender by buying that which is the opposite of what you tell people when they're selling it it's like well you're going to get more for your vehicle take the mods off sell them separately and sell the vehicle as standard it comes up all the time um on forums and that's just the advice if you want the best price for it you've got to sell the mods separately so and some of those mods were quite rare and uh, like an ARB front bumper from Australia it was a bloody heavy thing but that got a good price um, there's a lot of interest in it um, I didn't want it we don't need a ball, ball bars like that in the UK anyway I, I was always intrigued about the vehicle and I'd found I kind of saved photos from the internet of interesting vehicles I see during my time and I found a photo that I'd saved from a it had been on a pa the Patriot Roof Rack website. It was one of their banner images years and years ago, and I'd saved that image because that was like, quite a cool Defender. And just trawling through the images, I looked at it, and I was like, that looks remarkably like this Defender. And the more I looked, the more it made sense. Everything was... I mean, that it had a few more mods on then. It had a roof rack and it had spotlights. But this vehicle had... Uh, you know, it's ex exactly the same. Left-hand drive. It was you know, white, and it had uh, the the sill rails outside the jackable sills were identical. The external roll cage on it. It had four spotlights on the top with the roof rack. And this has had roof rack, uh, had, has had a roof rack on it. This vehicle has had all the wiring in it. Oh, the cover's just blown down. This vehicle had. Let's see if we can do this. So it's one of the windiest days of the year, and I've had to get in here with a cover. 
um, it had the wiring for four spotlights on the roof, which this vehicle had, and and it had the ARB bumper on the front, and it was just the like the chance of it being another vehicle other than this one, it was just utterly identical to that photo. So that's what I think it was. It was um, I think it was a vehicle owned, and this owned by I don't know why whether it was owned by Patriot Roof Racks. I contacted them and I never heard nothing because I wanted to find out um, whether it was owned by them or that it was just used. They knew somebody and they'd had a, it was just a photo from a customer. I don't know that they used, but but that that was um, that photo looked like it was in um, a kind of a pine forest in a hot, dry climate, probably Mediterranean, southern Spain, that kind of thing. Um, so it had been used overseas. And it's funny, when I took the dashboard off, behind the dash tray, there were loads of pine needles in there because, you know, vents open, you go through brush and the, and the pine needles will quite easily go through the, the grill and the vents. Um, it just fitted, you know, just, it just ties in immaculately. So I would like to know more uh, about this vehicle, but that's kind of as far as I've got to, but it's always interesting. I mean, funnily enough, my other Defender, that was um, owned by it. the guy I bought it from, ran a company in Italy, and I've, you know, I Googled that company, I found loads of images, and I found a YouTube video with my Defender in it. It's weird, you know, but this one I've been able to do the same thing as well. So I spent a lot of time refurbishing, I was, yeah, six months uh, pretty much refurbishing, bringing this back to factory as much as possible, and finding sourcing quite, you know, you know very good quality, um, factory things and upgrades that I'd want to put on this to make it just look more factory. Um, yeah, so that was that. And then I put it into storage five years ago and here we are. <laughs> and I've done bits of work on it um, over the time, but uh, essentially it's not roadworthy at the moment. The brake disc weren't, cause so it sat for about three years before I bought it. And it, the brake discs aren't in great condition when that happens and they're not in great condition now so um, it would need um, new brake discs and calipers to get it back on the road and uh, annoyingly three drive member bolts snapped off in the in the hubs as well so, so it will need two new hubs as well um, which is very annoying but so be it but uh, where this vehicle is I don't get to work on it that often um, yeah, don't get to work on it that often. So yeah, I bought it, it went into storage because I just didn't have the space. As I said, we had three cars between us and one parking space. It was just an utter pain, so I've stored it. And um, then the next year I went away for six months, I went overseas for six months, and then we had children, and then <clears throat> here we are. That's the way life goes. So that's where I stand with this this Defender. I've got it and I want to use it. It's just, and it will work, it will run again. It will go back on the road. I'm not entirely sure when, I just need the space. It's the space. I need the space where I can have this vehicle next to where I live, where at the same place as where I live really. And then then I can just like refine and tweak. I can get it back on the road. It doesn't need much work to get it back on the road. You know, two hubs, brakes, brake discs, calipers. What does that take? Not long. Um, I just need to be able to do that and to have it in a place where I know I can keep it securely and ideally under cover. And um, the reason why I wouldn't bring it to my current house where we've got a, a two car driveway, I wouldn't bring it to my current house because it's we're renting and we don't know how long we're going to, if we may be moving, the same reason why I've not done a full rebuild on my other Defender. I did have one comment that said, uh, asked me, can you count the leaks? The question's obviously not how does it leak, but how many leaks are there? And this being a 40,000 mile vehicle, 64,000 kilometer, it does have leaks. So let's go and count them now. That underneath at the front, that swivel ball is okay. Not many really leaks on the diff. This swivel ball does leak. So we are up to one. So the diff, uh, not leaking because I replaced the diff. Let me go a bit further. Gearbox, maybe a slight weight, but that's usually from the filler plugs. 
not leaking. Transfer box, leaking. There we go. There is a bit of, it is a bit wet around there. It's not an excessive leak. Don't really get drips on the floor, but that's probably, let's call that two. And then in the rear, rear diff, no leaks, because I've replaced that one as well. Shock absorbers, no leaks on those. So that was the leaks. There are two leaks on my rest of our spec Defender. There we go. I hope you found that video interesting. Uh, that was the story of my rest of the world spec Defender. If you've got any other questions, I'll leave a comment below. And uh, there's other videos about this vehicle and about rest of the world spec Defenders on this channel. If you're interested in them, uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos because I've got some other ones about this vehicle coming soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.